Welcome to the Susquehanna Express. I'm Brittany Spriggle, and I hope that this message is finding you well, wherever you may be. In this webcast, we have four main segments. The first is a short message by Mike Biella, Director of Connectional Ministries, followed by an interview with Jody Robinson, the Director of Discovery Place, a Christian Resource Center. Then there is a video of a local church that is thinking outside of the box and trying to rethink church. It's entitled The Cowboy Church. Finally, we have an interview with Rob Vischer, the new executive director of Mission Central. He shares some of the God moments that he has already experienced in his short time in that position. The Connectional Ministries team of the Susquehanna Annual Conference is all about providing our local churches with cutting edge resources to equip and empower our local churches for ministry in the 21st century as they carry out their disciple making mission in the name of Christ. You're about to experience something brand new, the premiere edition of a TV style magazine webcast hosted by communications intern, Brittany Spriggle. In this webcast, Brittany will be speaking with guests from across the annual conference, some of which are involved in their own disciple-making ministries, sharing their stories with us. You'll also have the opportunity to meet some of the Connectional Ministry staff and hear more about those cutting-edge resources that can be yours for the asking. Now sit back and enjoy this premier edition of Susquehanna Express hosted by our own Brittany Spriggle. Many people are unaware of the Christian resources that are available through the conference at Discovery Place. Who better to share with us than the Center's director, Jody? Thank you very much for coming, Jody. Thank you for having me. Uh, could you share with us a little bit of the overview of Discovery Place? Sure. Discovery Place is the resource center for the Susquehanna Conference. We have over 4,000 resources that we provide free of charge to churches in the Susquehanna Conference. Um, those resources cover the areas of uh, small group studies, uh, mission resources, evangelism resources, uh, leadership development, just about any area that you would need resources for your local congregation, we can provide those. Um, you can access our resources by coming to Discovery Place. We're located in the conference office in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Our office hours are weekdays from 9 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. You can call me at our 1-800 number, um, or you can visit our website um, at www.discovery-place.org. And on our website, we have a full catalog of all of our resources. Are those resources available just for the pastors and churches? Are they available outside the conference? They're available mostly to any member of the United Methodist Church and Susquehanna Conference. We do sometimes provide those materials for folks outside of our conference. Um, but they are, our resources are um, paid for with shares of ministry, so we try to make those available to the people who are actually paying for them. I know that you've brought with you a few um, of your favorite resources. Would you mm -hmm. mind sharing them with us? Sure. Uh, one of the most popular resources lately is called uh, Five Practices of a Fruitful Congregation. Um, this is a resource um, for church-wide campaigns for vitalizing congregations. And the focus areas are radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking missions and service, and extravagant generosity. And this is a resource that the bishop has been promoting throughout the conference. Um, our newest small group resource is by Max Licato, and it's called Outlive Your Life. Um, and this study explores how we as Christians can live our lives in such a way that we can make a difference in the lives of the billions of poor and suffering people throughout the world. Thank you for sharing with us. We look forward to having you back to share more of your favorite resources. Thank you. Be sure to check the Discovery Place website for a list of available materials. Up next, 
we have an exciting video of a church within the conference that is reaching out into its community by holding church services in an unconventional way. It has lovingly been referred to as the Cowboy Church. The first mouth you feed is not yours in the morning, it's your animal's mouth. Love of creatures and creation runs deep in the country. But for some, like Sue and Clarence Myers, their lifestyle left them feeling out of sync with traditional church. You know, my clothes aren't clean enough, my, my um, car isn't clean enough, my kids aren't spit shined enough. I don't feel like I belong. So the Myers and neighbor Lee and Eldred came up with the idea of cowboy church, where worship starts in the stalls and continues on the trails. The commute can be hours long. One group brings miniature ponies and carts from 45 minutes away to the delight of nine-year-old Lexi Eldred. I feel excited about Cowboy Church. I feel great to pet a horse and ride a horse. Gentle. Single mom Kimberly Brennan wasn't attending regular services, but she felt so accepted here, she had her son baptized. You can relax and noise is okay, and you know, just being a, a baby is okay. You know, so that makes me feel good. You know, it makes me feel good for him. Eggs served sunny side up with easy conversation. How you doing? It's a time to catch up with old friends and to welcome new ones. Some people will be going by, they'll stop, what's going on? So we tell them, and nine chances out of ten, they'll be over here. Are we ready to come worship the Lord? Cowboy Church is held every third Sunday of the month with the Reverend Alice Padone preaching. She also pastors five tiny United Methodist churches around Equinick in northeastern Pennsylvania. At its largest, this service draws nearly three times the town's population of 30, especially if you count the horses. We're invitational to people. We want them to feel comfortable to come in and really enjoy worshiping God. We're not all that stick in the mud as some people might think. People clap and dance and enjoy the music. So we're getting more people to come that maybe have never gone to church. And you know, hopefully we'll all be better for it. This video was brought to you by the people of the United Methodist Church through World Service Donations. Today I'm talking with the new Executive Director of Mission Central, Rob Vischer. He began his position on October 1st. Thank you for spending some time with us today and talking a little bit about your position here. I understand you've been very busy moving houses and being the new position. Yeah. If someone didn't know anything about Mission Central, what would you tell them? Well, first, <laughs> it's managed chaos if you were to just show up at, at Mission Central because it's a madhouse sometimes, but it is organized and, and managed. Uh, the other thing I would say to folks is this is sacred space because there's always God moments happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a litany of stories that, that uh, we could share with you about that. But then also the main focus of, of Mission Central is to be three-pronged in the sense that um, we're mission outreach, reaching out in mission, but also we try to do mission education to educate folks where and how and, and that they can participate in mission and ministry. And then of course disaster response. Mm -hmm. So those, those three things are our main focus uh, as the underlining foundation of, of how we operate here at Mission Central. Okay. Uh, what was your experience with Mission Central before getting this position here? Uh, prior to coming on as executive director, um, I served for a year with the board, the managing board of Mission Central as the district representative for Scranton District uh, up in Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, so facilitating there uh, as a liaison between Mission Central and the district, uh, you know, information wise, uh, assisting folks in where they can bring things that, that they want to add to Mission Central's uh, warehouse to then be distributed out, that sort of thing. Um, and then also as clergy uh, would bring my confirmation classes here. In fact, this past last spring we had 13 confirmands and we brought uh, 54 church members. We rented a bus and come on up and, and worked for a day here at Mission Central. Uh, so those are some of my experiences with Mission Central. 
since you have had some experience with Mission Central before, um, I'm sure that you have your own ideas of what you would like to bring to the program. Can you share any of the um, goals that you have set to accomplish? Yeah, initially uh, bringing sort of my pastor skills in the sense that to, to bring that spiritual piece here, is to, and which is already here, but just to kind of highlight that and maintain that, but also helping to give vision to not only the staff and the volunteers that are here, but to the conference in a, in a broader sense, the vision of where we can head and things that we can do, help to connect the dots between those that are in need and those that have the resources that, that can meet those needs and make those connections. Um, also just to challenge folks, to challenge uh, the staff, the volunteers, to challenge uh, other folks out in the other churches and in, in the area, and whether it's ecumenical or United Methodist churches, uh, to how they can participate in our mission and ministry here that God has called us to do, which I truly feel it's a calling from God. You mentioned that one of your goals is to encourage church members and other people to give of their time and resources to Mission Central. Would you mind sharing with us one of the God moments that you have experienced here at Mission Central? Uh, well, several God moments, uh, even with, with me getting here. but. Uh, one of the most recent things that happened at Mission Central is there was a, a woman that came in and she's looking to start a clinic on the Ivory Coast of Africa. And she really hadn't met with any success of where she could get some things that she needed. And Kathy was taking her through the warehouse and she started saying, well, we need this and this and that. And, and uh, so Kathy was able to find some of those things and she was just really overwhelmed with joy for that. But one of the other things that she needed was a baby scale. And Kathy was like, I don't know if we have a baby scale. And not, I, I'm not sure exactly the timing, but certainly within a few minutes or an hour, uh, someone came by and said, you know, I've got this baby scale in my car and it's been riding around there for a month, but I, I really needed to get it here. And those types of things happen all the time at Mission Central. Um, this past weekend, we had a ministry fair and some of the hubs were sharing. That's that's sort of our sub-mission centrals that are out in the region. Uh, and uh, they were sharing some of those same types of things. They needed a certain amount of money for something and they weren't sure if it was gonna happen and right in the last moment it, it shows up right exactly what they needed. So uh, lots of stories of God moments and, they, and they'll be on the internet all the time. So just watch for those. Okay, uh, that's neat to know that you should just follow through on that little nudge that God gives you because even if it's something so unique as a baby scale, there might be somebody that needs it and they can bring it here to Mission Central and you'll find a use for it. Truly, indeed. God, if God calls us, God will empower us. God will make the way for those things to happen. And it's trusting in, God, in God's timing and God's direction. God calls us to make that first step. We may not always know where we're stepping, but uh, God will. Absolutely. Well, thank you for stepping out in faith and taking on this new position. Thank you. Glad to be here. God thank bless you. your ministry. Thank you for joining me for this webcast of Susquehanna Express. Until next time, I look forward to keeping in touch with you on our Facebook page, as well as my blog at susquehannaexpress.blogspot.com.